I've spoken to a few different people about cider and it appears that it has a difficult image. Head down the M5 to the warm hills of the southwest and you'll find sweet fools full of apples and cider and bad stories. I'd like to contest that. Most situations that I've found myself in that involve cider have been familial and warm. Language is of course about stories and so here's a few words which are associated with cider and well all of those good times sitting around talking to the good, the bad and the occasionally brilliant. Apples make the man, that's how that saying goes. The word apple is old, it's almost as old as your mum actually. Sorry, I don't know why, I don't know why I felt I needed to get that. This is the proto-Germanic word that likely gave us the English, the Gaulish, the Irish, the Lithuanian, the Norse and the old church Slavonic words which all sort of amount to the same thing. In fact, what's interesting is that really no one has any idea what the relationship between all of these cognates are, which came first, etc. But, but that they all have the same sound implies that that sound has been around for a long time. Something that is certain is that the word apple was used up until the 17th century to refer to really any fruit that wasn't a berry. So bananas were apples of paradise and dates were finger apples, which I don't know why, but that's funny. And we still call what you shouldn't have on pizza a pineapple. So, well, because it resembles a giant pine cone. So, what have we learned? I mean, you can put pizza, you can put pineapple on pizza if you like, I guess. It's up to you. Just, just stop doing it. It's up to you. The word peri comes from an old French word and then further back to Latin and it basically means pear. Peri is of course a refreshing libation made from pears. A libation by the way is, uh, well, it's, it's where you pour out a drink to honour a god. Uh, but the word goes back to a Latin word meaning offering and probably a bit further back to a Greek word meaning to pour. So pouring one out for the homies as well. It's always been a thing. It is an ancient tradition. Back to peri. Now it should be said at this stage that a peri is not a type of cider. It's not recognised as a type of cider now. It's kind of its own thing and you shouldn't really refer to it as a cider because well people who know things about cider might get a bit irritated with you. Talking of people who know a lot about cider, I'm filming this in the cider box which is in St Philip's in Bristol. I've enjoyed at least one drink response drink here and maybe taken away some cider as well drink responsibly the staff here are excellent and I will continue to say that until I reach a point where drink responsibly I come in here get a bit too heavily refreshed and then don't remember something that I may have said drink responsibly that makes everything awkward and then afterwards I don't know why everything is awkward now drink responsibly drink responsibly <laughs> Scrumpy is generally accepted to be a rougher, stronger, usually naturally fermented cider. The origin of the word is, well, it's unknown. There is quite a lot of speculation out there and it's generally accepted that it probably comes from the word to scrump, which is basically to steal fruit. It seems a bit much for, you know, a few apples here and there. I, I think I'd probably prefer the term light-hearted borrowing. Either way, the nature of the drink reflects the method of its procurement. Despite the uncertainty of the etymology, it is interesting to point out that a scrumple is a measure of weight used by apothecaries. It's basically, it's equivalent to 20 grains or in, a, you know, a weighing system that actually makes sense. One, uh, just under 1.3 grams. Sadly, it's likely to just be a homophone and probably has nothing to do with it. The OED, by the way, says that a scrump is a small apple. It says that this is a colloquial term and, well, I'm a little bit confused by that. I've never heard it before and I grew up in rural Gloucestershire. So if you are from Gloucestershire or Herefordshire or Somerset or one of the accepted cider counties, or do you know what, if you're from anywhere and you've ever heard an apple referred to, or a small apple referred to as a scrump, then please let me know down in the comments and just be nice to each other it's not it's not hard but actually some sometimes it is hard to be nice to people but you know just make the effort Right then, so here it is. The etymology of the word cider goes back to French and then Latin and then Hebrew. In the Hebrew, it just means basically a strong drink, so an alcoholic drink. 
The French word was the first one where it meant specifically a drink uh, which was made from uh, fermented pears or apples. The modern meaning pertaining only to apples appears to have um, appeared in the 19th century. In the United States there is, well there are two types of cider, there's hard cider and sweet cider and frankly it's so mystifying. Does that mean that you don't have apple juice? Because I recall a time when I worked in a restaurant and a colleague of mine who was telling the guests who were American tourists what types of juices we had she said apple juice and they couldn't work out what that meant is that a genuine thing or were they just being weird suffice to say she nearly had a nervous breakdown so United States viewers do you say apple juice or do you just call it sweet cider and if I go into a bar in the United States and ask for cider are they just gonna are they gonna look at me mystified and give me a non-alcoholic drink and then people are gonna take the mick out of me anyway that brings us neatly to cider versus cider which sounds like I don't know maybe some litigation somewhere but actually is actually about the I versus the Y spelling of cider. Most sources I found though it should be said that most of those sources came from the United States state that Y is a more common spelling in the United Kingdom in England which is bollocks. We don't spell it with a Y we spell it with an I although it's obvious that at some point in the past it was spelt with a Y. To be honest, I didn't even know it was a thing until it was pointed out to me by the person who runs this fantastic bar, Dan. That was one of the first things he asked me when I when I approached Dan to film here was he said, oh, perhaps you can solve this ancient, I didn't know anything about it, which, which was great, that was fun, wasn't it? Anyway, if you want to spell it with a Y, that's fine. And if you want to spell it with an I, that's also fine. But it likely goes back to the fact that, well, as I've said before in other videos, spelling wasn't formalized until quite recently. So you would find the I and the Y spelling by the same author uh, being used in both ways. So uh, yeah, I mean it was formalized into the I. If you want to say why, you're probably trying to make a statement about tradition or where that side is from or spell it however you want if I'm honest. But I mean, it, you know, typically spell it with an I. That's probably going to get you full marks at school as opposed to a big fat red cross. At which point then you can talk to, you can accuse your teacher of being a prescriptivist just mumbling about prescriptivism <sighs> so there you are do a subscribe and maybe a like and share this if you're feeling particularly fruity and thank you very much to dan and the cider box and all the staff here they're all bloody brilliant um try to do something nice for yourself if you can maybe phone up a friend and have a chat to them about something that you like or a memory that you share together either way take care bye bye oh